All right, good evening po sa inyong lahat na nandiyan ngayon sa Pilipinas and it's a beautiful morning here coming from South Carolina, USA. If you are in another part of the world, it might be good afternoon for the rest of you. So again, we welcome all of you for another edition of our general education and professional education discussion. Okay, today is the 22nd of August. And before we start, we for, we are go for, going to first have the opening prayer mula po sa ating isa, mga, isa sa ating mga kaguro na si Pastor Efren. Hello, good evening. May I request everyone to please join me in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Father, we adore you because of your unending love and providence to each one of us. Right now, you are sitting on your throne, looking at us, looking what is happening to the world which you have created. Many of our fellow men are suffering from this global pandemic. We are all in one accord right now, O oh Lord, to ask healing, comfort, and providence before your holy throne. We claim it, O oh Lord, because of our faith in you, that you mightily save us. In this time, O oh God, that as we go on through our online review, may you help us understand our lesson, Lord. Please, enlighten our minds. Grant us the wisdom to remember all that we have taken up. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn and share our friendship through this platform. Thank you also to our kind coach who is always around to guide and help us fulfill our dreams to be licensed professional teachers so we can help mold the minds of the young to be future, law-abiding, productive, and obedient to you. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so again, maraming salamat po, Pastor Efren, for preparing our opening prayer and also our closing prayer for tonight's uh, live stream. All right, so again, we welcome you back for our general education, professional education discussion tonight. It's uh, 7 p.m., 7.05 in the Philippines. It's the morning of Saturday here in the U.S. And of course, wherever you are, it might be the afternoon. So we welcome all of you, especially for all those people who are watching us for the first time. Welcome po. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig and for joining us. Now, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share this video. You can do that on Facebook for those people who are watching us on Facebook. And also, of course, sa ating mga parokyano nandiyan sa YouTube. Okay, so again, please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and share this video so that we may help more people pass the land. Okay, now, if you are still not part of GROW, GROW is Guru Pinoy Review Online Work Group, our exclusive FB group. Uh, this is where we send all the exclusive materials that we have, those things that we are discussing here in our live stream, and also more materials. So if you are still not members of GROW, Again, it's very easy to become a member. All you need to do is to pay a certain amount of money through Palawan Cebuan or ML, the name, the address, the phone number is there. And then once you have paid, you need to send a picture of your receipt through Study Link or Gurung Pinoy's official Facebook page, and then we are going to add you to grow. Okay? You may also send a super sticker through our YouTube live stream. All right, so again, that's for GROW, but now we've got good news for you, as you, some of you may have already known, and a lot of you have uh, become members within this week. We have a promo right now, and the payment right now is not just not 500, but it's only 250 pesos, and that is going to be until tomorrow, okay? So ang um, bukas na lamang po yung 250 natin. So make sure that you grab that chance. That's a one-time payment, 
and that is until you take the let okay you don't need to pay five thousand pesos as what other review centers are asking you to pay you don't need to pay every month but we are only asking you to pay until tomorrow it's 250 pesos only book that's a one-time payment of 250 pesos okay so what are you waiting for be part of GROW and uh, be one of our lab passers, all right? Now we proceed with our discussion. Again, we are going to have uh, 20 items, Gen Ed, and another 20 items for Prof Ed tonight, okay? We start with Gen Ed question number one. Make sure that you have your notebooks with you and your pen or your pencil with you, okay? We are going to start with Gen Ed now. But before that, please don't forget to like. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Okay, we start. All right, question number one. The Katipunan in Cavite was divided into two factions, the Magdiwang and the Magdalo. While the Magdiwang in Cavite was led by Mariano Alvarez, who led the Magdalo faction? Was it Daniel Terona, Artemio Ricarte, Baldomero Aguinaldo, or Siriaco Bonifacio? Okay, so is it, this is in the category of social studies. Uh, for those of you who are not added to GROW yet, uh, mamaya po. I will be adding you to GROW later. All right, now many people are answering letter C on YouTube. Uh, before I forget, uh, uh, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Rachel Abuela, yung ating um, early bird, no? palaging early bird itong si Ma'am Rachel. And of course, meron din siyang maagang paayuda. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Rachel. Good evening. Okay, so many people are answering the letter C. Dito sa ating uh, Facebook, ganun din, karamihan letter C. Let's take a look at our slide. All right. Now, there were two factions in the Cavite chapter for your Katipunan. Okay, now the two factions are the Magdalo faction, which was led by Baldomero Aguinaldo. And uh, they wanted to establish a new government. So yan yung pinaglalaban ng ating Magdalo faction. Yung Magdiwang faction naman, under Mariano Alvarez, they wanted to keep the Katipunan as is. Okay, so Magdiwang faction was under Mariano Alvarez and Magdalo faction was under Baldomero Aguinaldo. So sa makatawid, ang ating tamang sagot dito would be letter C. Okay, so tama po kayo, letter C, that's Baldomero Aguinaldo. Okay, now Baldomero Aguinaldo, of course, was... Uh, the cousin of uh, Emilio Aguinaldo. Now, sino naman itong ibang mga tao na nandito sa ating choices? Daniel Tirona po was known to have insulted, okay, he has insulted and maligned Andres Bonifacio for not being a lawyer and being the director of interior in the convention of Tejeros, okay? So, isa siya sa mga basher ni Andres Bonifacio, no? kahit nung una pa lamang eh, meron ng bashers. Okay, so, Daniel Tirona was one of the bashers of Andres Bonifacio, he said, Andres Bonifacio cannot be the director of interior because he is not even a lawyer. Okay, so that's Daniel Tirona. Now, Artemio Ricarte was a Filipino general during the Philippine Revolution and the Philippine-American War. Siriaco Bonifacio naman was, of course, one of the brothers of uh, Andres Bonifacio. He was killed in Maragondon Cavite when there was an argument and there was a gunshot. And you know naman that uh, there was uh, rivalry between Bonifacio and Aguinaldo. Okay, so uh, that started a, a gunfight. And so Siriaco Bonifacio was killed in Maragondon Cavite and Andres, another brother, were wounded and they were taken to like a camp. Okay, parang kampo nila at doon ay um, capital punishment yung pinataw sa kanila. Kaya alam natin na si Andres at si Procopio ay pinatay lang din ng mga kapwa Pilipino. Okay? So kahit noon pa man, ay meron na talagang crab mentality no, sa Pinoy. Hindi na walang, walang cooperation. No? They were competing with each other. 
All right, so again, number one, that will be letter C. Okay, letter C po, Baldomero Aguinaldo. All right, number two, who was the founder and first editor of La Solidaridad in Barcelona, Spain, and was considered the greatest orator of the Filipino colony in Spain? Is it letter A, Gregorio H. Del Pilar? Letter B, Mariano Ponce? Letter C, Graciano Lopez Jaina? Or letter D, Marcelo H. Del Pilar? Okay, we're already at number two, and a lot of people were correct in number one. Okay, what about number two? Again, people, please don't forget to share, to like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and of course, share this so that your friends may also have this free online review. Okay, now for number two, many people on YouTube are answering the letter C. Okay, dito sa Facebook, ganun din, letter C din. Nagkakasundo ngayon yung ating Facebook and ating YouTube. Alright, so again for number two, who was the founder and first editor of La Solidaridad in Barcelona, Spain, and was considered the greatest orator of the Filipino colony in Spain? Was it letter A, Gregorio H. Del Pilar, letter B, Mariano Ponce, letter C, Graciano Lopez Jaina, or letter D, Marcelo H. Del Pilar? All right. Now, the correct answer, of course, would be letter C. That's Graciano Lopez Jaina. My uh, Manwa, no? He's from Iloilo. And, of course, he was known to be the greatest orator of the Filipino colony in Spain. Okay? Now, Gregorio H. Del Pilar naman, we know him to be boy general because he's one of the youngest uh, soldiers, the youngest generals in Aguinaldo's uh, troop. Okay? So, hindi po siya yung pinakabata, pero isa siya sa mga... Pinakabata. Mariano Ponce is among the founders of La Solidaridad and Asociación Hispano-Filipino. Manunulat din po itong si Mariano Ponce. And of course, Marcelo H. Del Pilar is a well-known writer and one of his most famous pen names was Plaridel. Okay? So these were um, some important contributions of these people. All right, now, kung maaalala nyo, if we're talking about Philippine literature during the Spanish period, meron tayong tatlong pangunahing mga manunulat, okay? So, Jose Rizal, of course, he gave us Noli Metangere, El Filibusterismo, among the rest of his work. And he's known to be the great thinker, okay? Now, Graciano Lopez Jaina, the great orator, okay? Uh, he gave us Fray Botod, Esperanza, and La Ia, or La Ia del Fraile. And of course, the, sec the third one here is Mar Marcelo H. Del Pilar. He's known to be the great political analyst and journalist. And he gave us Kaiigat Kayo, the Salad at Sohan, and Sampung Kautusan ng mga praile. Okay? So these were some of the most famous works of these three people. Okay, now we go to question number three. All right? The breakdown of feudalism started in, was it letter A, Russia, letter B, Hungary, letter C, England, or letter D, France? Maraming salamat sa inyong pakape, Ma'am Joy Dairiat. Thank you po, Ma'am Joy, for your ayuda. Okay, so nag iba iba na yung answer nyo. Dito sa Facebook, karamihan ay letter D. All right, again, please don't forget to react to our video. If you're on Facebook, then you may like this video, you may love this video. Please don't be angry. Okay? And don't forget to like our Facebook page. Also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have so many videos that can help you pass the let on YouTube. There's a playlist for general education. There is another playlist for professional education. Of course, we have our playlist for all the previous live streams that we've had. 
So that's Janet and Prof at Playlist uh, for our live streams. Okay, so please don't forget to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video on your Facebook account so that we may help more people. Okay, now on YouTube, I can see more people are choosing letter D. Okay, thank you so much for everyone who's liking, uh, loving this video. And also, please make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and that you share our video. All right, number three, the breakdown of feudalism started in letter A, Russia, letter B, Hungary, letter C, England, letter D, France. Now, uh, when you say feudalism, this is a way of structuring society around relationships that were derived from the holding of land in exchange for service or labor. Kaya meron tayong uh, tinatawag ng mga feudal lords. Ito yung mga feudal lords, yung ating mga uh, hasyendero, no? Okay, so this was a way of structuring society. The relationship was from the holding of land in exchange for service or labor. So pwede kang magkaroon ng parcel ng land nila if you are going to pay or pwedeng bayaran mo sila through labor. All right, so the question here is the breakdown of feudalism started where? Okay, and the correct answer would be that's a uh, letter depot at France, okay? At an early eight, at, at an early stage of the French Revolution, on just one night of August 4th, 1789, France abolished the long-lasting remnants of feudal order, okay? So the correct answer would be letter D, it's in France. It started in France, okay? Letter, letter depot, France. All right, now we go to number four. The voyage of Ferdinand Magellan is considered the greatest achievement in the history of sea exploration and discovery because it, letter A, marked the discovery of westward route to the east, letter B, marked the first circumnavigation of the globe, letter C, made Spain the mistress of the sea, letter D, proved that the world is flat. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot natin for question number four? Okay, question number four is talking about Ferdinand Magellan and his contribution in sea exploration and discovery. Again, if you're watching us on Facebook, make sure that you like this video, you love this video, and please share it or start a watch party so we can help more people. If you're watching us on YouTube, then make sure that you also like this video. Some of you have not liked this video yet, react, react to our video. And of course, uh, share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's still Guru Pinoy. Now, a lot of people on YouTube are answering the letter b good evening paul sir bf versus bf vlogs first timer from negros oriental okay good evening paul okay now the rest of the people on facebook some are answering letter a others letter b so again we go back to our question the voyage of ferdinand magellan is considered the greatest achievement in the history of sea exploration and discovery because it marked the discovery of westward route to the east. Letter B marked the, the first circumnavigation, okay, ang unang pag-ikot uh, sa mundo, no? Letter C made Spain the mistress of the sea. Mistress here, of course, would be the feminine term for master, okay? So master of the sea, mistress of the sea in Spain. And letter D proved that the world is flat, Okay. Now, the correct answer, of course, here would be, that's letter B. Mark the first circumnavigation of the globe. Okay, so siya po yung una nakapaglibot, uh, nakapaglibot sa mundo, no? And, of course, we cannot, we cannot choose letter D kasi sabi ng letter D, prove that the world is flat. We all know that uh, the world is not flat. It is a uh, sphere. Okay, so the correct answer here would be letter B. Letter B, mark the first circumnavigation of the globe. Okay, so that would be for number four. Now we go to number five. Lately, kidney disease has been counted among the first cause of mortality. The latest death in shows that despite a kidney transplant, death happens when 
Letter A, kidney transplants last only for weeks. Letter B, kidney transplanted comes from a relative. Letter C, kidney transplant is rejected by the body. Or letter D, kidney transplanted can be replaced by the body. Mom Roselle Satore, that's uh, BF versus BF Vlogs. That's Mom Roselle Satore here from, she said here from Dumaguete, Dumaguete City. Good evening, Paul. Okay, people on YouTube are answering the letter C. All right. Now here on Facebook, we also see people answering the letter C. We go back to our question. Lately, kidney disease has been counted among the first cause of mortality or death. The latest shows that despite a kidney transplant, death happens when kidney transplants last lasts only for weeks. Letter B, kidney transplanted comes from a relative. Letter C, kidney transplant is rejected by the body. Letter D, kidney transplanted can be replaced by the body. We know that the correct answer is... Letter C, kidney transplant is rejected by the body. So even if makakita ka ng compatible na kidney donor, so usually family members, and even if the transplant has gone successfully, uh, it would still depend on how your body would react to the new transplant. Okay, so letter, D, letter C po ang tamang sagot. Okay, letter C is the correct answer. All right, number six. Milton argued, give the liberty to know, to alter, and to argue freely according to conscience, all liberties. What does this mean? Letter A, this is a testimonial on censored speech. Letter B, this is a declaration of the freedom of the, of the press and thought. Letter C, this gives a picture of the right uh, to speak man's thoughts, but not to hear thoughts of others. Letter D, Freedom of speech to Milton requires no chosen words, but it makes one feel good to speak. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for question number six? All right, again, please don't forget to like, love, react to this video. Like our Facebook page, official Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hurung Pinoy Steel. And please share this video. Share it to your wall, on your Facebook account, or maybe start a watch party. Okay, now many people on YouTube are answering letter B. On Facebook, Karamian, letter D. Okay, now we go back. Milton argued, give the liberty to know. Okay, liberty to know, freedom to know, to alter, and to argue freely according to conscience. This, and for him, this is, or these are all liberties. So liberty to think, to alter, to change something, and to argue freely. And of course, the correct answer would be letter B, declaration of the freedom of the press and thought. Okay, so freedom of the press here would mean the freedom to speak, okay? That's the freedom to speak and, of course, the freedom to think about whatever it is that you want to think about. Okay, so the correct answer would be letter B for number six. Letter B po tayo for number six. All right, now number seven. The meeting of the APEC in the Philippines was held in November 1996. What was its lasting significance? Letter A, Filipinos feel the need to relate to Asia-Pacific countries, not only politically, but economically. Letter B, Filipinos became aware of global matters to maintain peace. Letter C, Filipinos will display their superiority among Asians. Or letter D, Filipinos realize he is no longer an island. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for question number seven? Again, please don't forget to react to our video, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the rest of the videos that can help you pass the let. That you can find our YouTube channel. There's a playlist for Gen Ed, playlist for Prof Ed, and of course, there's a playlist for our 
previous live streams and uh, share our video. Okay, please share the video. People on YouTube, please like the video. Some of you are, are not done liking it yet. Okay, many people on YouTube are answering letter B. Dito sa Facebook, and then letter B. All right, so again, for number seven, the meeting in, of the APEC in the Philippines was held in November 1996. What was its lasting significance? Filipinos feel the need to relate to Asia-Pacific countries, not only politically, but economically. Letter B, Filipinos became aware of global matters to maintain peace. Letter C, Filipinos will display their superiority among Asians. Or letter D, Filipinos realize it's no longer an island. Okay, the correct answer is letter A, Filipinos feel the need to relate to Asia-Pacific countries, not only politically, but also economically. Okay, also economically. When you say APEC, kasi, this is Asia Pacific economic cooperation. So the most important part here would be economically, not just for peace, okay, not only politically, but also economically. Hence, letter A is our answer. Okay, APEC again is Asia Pacific economic cooperation. And on your slide there, you can see the different uh, nations that are part of APEC. Okay, so APEC is Asia Pacific. But it also includes some other countries here. No? So Canada, United States, uh, Mexico, Peru, Chile, and Janin Pusila. Okay, so these are the member countries of Asia Pacific. Um, the Philippines joined it in 1989 when APEC was first established. Okay, so that's uh, for a letter A po yung tamang sagot. All right, we go to number eight. Maternity leaves are extended to women. What legal provision extends this? Letter A, Article 13, Section 14, Women. Letter B, Article 14, Education. Letter C, Article 13, Role, uh, role and Right of People's Organization. Letter D, Article 12, the Bill of Rights. Again, people on YouTube, please like our video. I can see only 59 people have liked the video. Please don't forget to like our video. If you're not done liking the video yet, please do like it. Okay, it's now for uh, ating YouTube, no? Karamihan letter A. Dito din sa Facebook, karamihan ay letter A. All right, now this is a bonus na, no? Maternity leaves extended to women. And so, of course, letter A is the correct answer, okay? The provision for women. Okay, so letter A po ang tamang sagot. Now, we go to number nine. Philippine economy indices are closely related to the rise and fall of the... This is already a bonus item. You already know what the answer to this one is. Okay, naulit na itong tanong na ito. And I have been talking about this before. Philippine economy indices are closely related to the rise and fall of the blank. Ito, uh, karamihan yung, or palagi yung ginagamit nating basihan to check whether the economy has improved or not. Okay, to check whether our economy has improved or not. Good evening po, Ma'am Edna De Luna. Okay, and the correct answer for number nine, bonus na, is letter A, U.S. dollars. Okay, so yan lagi yung, ang palitan lagi ng U.S. dollars would be our uh, basihan to check whether the Philippine economy is improving or not. Now remember, nabaliktad po siya pag uh, meron kang OFW, pag asawa ka ng isang seaman, for example, or may nagpapadala sa yung remittance ng OFW, if lumaki yung palitan, that means humihina ang ating ekonomiya. So baliktad po siya. Ha? Pag malaki yung palitan ng dolyar, that means humina ang ating ekonomiya. Pag bumaba naman yung palitan ng dolyar, that means um, mas nagiging uh, strong yung ating economy. Okay? So the economy is getting stronger. Alright? So tandaan nyo po yan. 
Now we go to number 10. A rich candidate bought a big family by the thousands. On election day, no one was allowed to leave their homes. What was deprived of the members of the family? Letter A, right to eminent domain. Letter B, right to life and liberty. Letter C, right to participate in a democratic process. Or letter D, right to due process. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 10? Now, people on YouTube are answering letter C, Karamihan. Okay, dito sa Facebook, iba, iba pa yung answers nila. Okay, so going back, sabi ng ating question, a rich candidate bought a big family by the thousands. On election day, no one was allowed to leave their homes. Okay, so what was deprived of the members of the family? That means they were not allowed to vote. Right to eminent domain, we know eminent domain to be one of uh, the powers of our government. No, So the power of eminent domain, that means the government can take a parcel of your land or any of your property if it is going to use it for the common good. If more people are going to um, benefit from it, then the government can do that. But of course, you should be given some some amount of money you now as remuneration so that's the right to eminent domain the right to life and liberty along with uh, the right to security these are the three natural rights that we have the right to life security and liberty the right to participate in a democratic process of course this would mean this would include voting um the freedom to run for a position the freedom to hold a political position and letter D, right to due process, that means uh, no one is above the law, okay? So if you are accused, the legal proceedings should be should be done uh, legally nga, no? So dapat eh, legal at fair. That's the right to due process. And of course, the correct answer would be letter C, right to participate in a democratic process. So pwede natin sabihin na they were disenfranchised, disenfranchised. That would be the uh, the term for those people who were not able to vote. Okay, they were disenfranchised. Hindi sila nakapag participate sa democratic process because they were not uh, able to vote. Okay, so number ten po is letter C. Now we go to number eleven before sleeping time. Children are discouraged to watch blank shows that cause nightmares. Letter A, spiteful. Letter B, special. Letter C, spectacular. Letter D, spectral. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 11? Don't forget to to like, love this video, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch all the videos that we have on YouTube, your Gen Ed playlist, Profit playlist, uh, live streams playlist. Okay, don't forget to like, subscribe, love, and of course, um, like our Facebook page, and more importantly, please share our video. So we can help more people start a watch party or share this video on your YouTube account. All right, before sleeping time, children are discouraged to watch shows that cause nightmares. Okay, watch blank shows. Karamihan sa inyo letter A on YouTube. Dito sa Facebook, karamihan ay letter C. Okay, spiteful. Spiteful means malicious. Okay, malicioso itong spiteful. Letter B naman special, you know what special means. Okay, so it's extraordinary. It's special. Letter C, spectacular. Spectacular means it's a really good movie. It's a really good uh, TV show, no? A marvelous TV show. But when you say uh, spectral, this is pertaining to ghosts. And so the correct answer would be spectral. Spectral, it pertains to ghosts. 
Okay, so katulad na lamang nitong uh, nauso dati at binan nga ng YouTube na Momo Challenge. Okay, so that would be letter D po. Letter D po ang tamang sagot. Spectral means uh, pertaining to ghost. Yes, sir, 250 po until tomorrow. Okay, now number 12. Local peace negotiation should be the primary concern of what office? Letter A, Philippine National Police. Letter B, local municipal provincial executives. Letter C, church. Letter D, Philippine Marines. What forces? Bonus na naman ito. Okay? You've already seen this uh, question before. Okay? Okay, yung tamang sagot for question number 12. I know you've already seen this question before. Okay, so what is the correct answer for number 12? This is bonus na for those people of, who are always there watching our video. You've already seen this, this question before. Okay, so karamihan dito sa YouTube, your answer is letter B. On Facebook, uh, many are answering letter A. Okay, so the question is, local peace negotiation should be the primary concern of what office? Philippine National Police, letter B. Local municipal and provincial, exec provincial executives, letter C. Church, letter D. SWAT forces. The correct answer is letter B. Local municipal and provincial executive po. So, unang-una muna, si Kapitan, si Kapitana. Okay, pag hindi kayo ni Kapitan, Kapitana, si Mayor. Okay, and then of course, my provincial executives ka. Ang um, Philippine National Police mo kasi this is nationwide. Okay, although po pwede mong sabihin na meron kang police sa, sa inyong town, paano naman sa inyong mga barrio. Okay, so again, your uh, correct answer will be letter B, local, municipal, and provincial executives. Sila po yung unang-unang na mamahala for um, the preservation of peace. Okay, number 13. The government has encouraged cooperation for taxi drivers. Where was this observed? Letter A, taxi drivers' alleged loss of units. Letter B, cooperative succeeded when amortization of units are up to date. Letter C, there is no strict sanction on members who fail to make good on their credit. Letter D, taxes are not required bonds so that taxi units can be re reported stolen. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 13? Alright, so again, sa ating mga parokyano, sa palagi nakatutok sa atin every time that we had our live stream, we started last month with Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday live stream. This month po, don't forget our schedule is Saturday and Sunday. So the next live stream that we'll have will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Thank you so much for all the parokyano that we have. Those people are always there watching us since the beginning of our live streams. So you all know that we started our YouTube channel. We started the live streams and we started reviewing for the lab online because of the pandemic. Okay, because um, not only because um, of the quarantine, okay, wala naman quarantine dito sa amin, but because uh, the schools became online, the classes became online. And so I had a lot of time in my hands and so i started this youtube channel to help people pass the left because we have uh helping people pass the left for a long time for almost two, 10 years already we used to have study link review and tutorial center in iloilo that's our physical review center before but of course that is now physically closed not only because of the pandemic but the main reason is that we moved here in the u.s so my family and i are living here in South Carolina, USA, because I am teaching in Manning High School, Manning, South Carolina. Okay, so if this is your first time to watch us, we welcome all of you. And of course, uh, we hope that you all pass the lab. Okay, so kapit lamang po, wag tamarin. For this month, our schedule is Saturday, Sunday. Um, as you may have already known, especially our parokyano, bumalik na po kami sa aming klase. Our classes here are still online until September 11th, but still, we need to go to school every day, no? So we hold the online classes, virtual class in our schools. 
Okay, so still we have Saturday, Sunday. So the next live stream schedule will be tomorrow, 7 p.m. That's Philippine time. Okay, so again, number 13, the government has, has encouraged cooperation sa meron ng mga co-op no? for taxi drivers, meron na sa mga asosasyon. Where was this observed? Is it letter A, taxi drivers' alleged loss of units na wala yung mga uh, unit nila, ng mga, mga kotse nila, yung mga taxi nila? Letter B, cooperative succeeded when amortization of units are up to date. Okay, so uh, naging successful yung co-op dahil nga sa pagtutulungan nila, yung bayad nila, yung boundary nila, no amortization nila ng units nila are up to date. There is no strict sanction on members who fail to make good on their credit. So kahit na hindi siya nagbabayad, kahit na marami siyang utang, ay walang penalty, walang sanction. Or letter D, taxes are not required bonds so that taxi units can be re reported stolen. So ang iba sa kanila ay nagre-report na stolen yung... yung um, taxi nila kahit hindi man okay kahit hindi okay so that would be for letter d and the correct answer of course would be letter b tama yan letter b po ang ating tamang sagot cooperative succeeded when amortization of units are up to date of course we need to look for the choice which is positive because we are looking for the success of your cooperative so letter b it's the only choice that is uh, positive in thought and that will be the correct answer letter b po Okay, now we go to number 14. Families in the troubled Mindanao were letter A, happy with gunshot filled air, letter B, satisfied with peace efforts, letter C, unmindful of the events, so they stayed home, letter D, scared, so they left their homes. Okay, now people on YouTube are eating. Sir Loreto is eating durian. Ma'am Christine, apple. Ako kakain din ako ng tinapay. Okay, so again, number 14. It's a very easy question. Ma'am Elsie, sarapan niyo po yung inyong niluluto. Now, many of you are answering with the letter D, and of course, that is the correct choice, okay? So, families were scared, and so they left their homes. That's letter D for number 14. Good evening, Ma'am Che Apostol. Habol po. All right, now we go to number 15. The comprehensive land reform law was the center of one government administration. Which administration claims this? Aquino regime, Marcos regime, Garcia regime, or Makapagal regime? Uh, so, kay Ma'am Eunice Carbajal naman, saging ang kinakain. Ma'am Eunice, please don't forget your prayers for tomorrow po. You may just send it through our um, Gmail or po pwede din po through Facebook. So, again, we would like to thank uh, Pastor Efren for the opening prayer. And of course, siya din po yung ating leader for the closing prayer tonight. Okay, nakaramihan sa inyo, letter D yung sagot. Okay, dito naman sa Facebook, letter A, karamihan. All right, the Comprehensive Land Reform Law was the center of one government administration. Which administration claims this? Okay, Aquino regime, Marcos regime, Garcia regime, or Makapagal regime. Now, if you are in GROW, I have already posted uh, the first 15 presidents there, their contributions, not their achievements. Uh, now, Aquino regime, we're talking about, of course, Corazon Aquino dito, pwede din namang Si Benigno Aquino, it's not specific. Marcos regime, you know, Marcos is uh, one of the major contributions na sinasabi ni Marcos. Palaging lumalabas na let is the Philippines will be great again. Si Marcos po yan. Garcia regime, he is uh, the one who started the austerity program. So tipid-tipid. And of course, he also started your Filipino first policy. Makapagal regime, we also don't know whether this is Gloria 
Gloria is well known for the Roro system, no? So roll on, roll off. And um, just dada makapagal naman, her father, who also used to be a president, he's known for uh, changing your Philippine Independence Day from July 4th to June 12th. So siya po yung nag-change from July 4th to June 12th. Now, another thing about just dada makapagal was that he started the... the the um, uh, what's this comprehensive land laws okay so uh not comprehensive land reform laws siya yung unang una nag start ng land reform laws but here in our question it says comprehensive land reform law comprehensive land reform law and this is a hallmark of one government and that would be aquino regime we're talking about corazon aquino here okay your uh, your carp your carl this was under uh, the regime of Aquino. Okay, so under po ito kay Corazon Aquino. Si Makapagal, nag-start siya ng land reform laws, but our question here kasi it says comprehensive land reform law. So that was by Corazon Aquino. So letter A, Aquino regime is the correct answer. All right? Number 16. How is... The yearly children's summer camp carried out for years. So you have your choices there. Maraming nagpalit ng answer for number 15, no? Sister Downing said. Sabi, letter A, final answer. Okay, so tumama si Sir. Sir Pinoy Prenur. Good evening. Nalate ka, Sir. Video like. Buenas noches. At todos, sana all press, nakakakain ng durian. Uh, yung four-piece actually was started uh, during the time of Gloria. Meron ng four-piece. Okay, so ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 16? How is the yearly children's summer camp carried out for years? Letter A, children sent by the Philippines gained to international understanding. Letter B, children of families who can afford don't attend this camp. Letter C, organization of this summer camp produce yearly reunions and shared experiences of global perspectives. Letter D, knowing and living with others has a possible effect on the participants. Okay, many people are answering letter C. Good evening po, Sir Pinoy. Okay, and the correct answer is letter C. Organization this summer camp produce yearly reunions and shared experiences of global perspectives. Okay, so, but of course, ngayon, ay wala nang uh, masyadong ganap, no? wala nang masyadong ganito dahil nga sa pandemic. Until we find the vaccine, until the vaccine becomes available to the public. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C for number 16. Welcome back, Sir Mark. Pababalik lamang ni Sir Mark. Alright, yes, karamihan nga ngayon soksay. Madali, no? Number 17, oh, ito naman is in science. Ah, no. Sock side din ito. Sock science slash science. Most natural calamities happen in July and August. Students are dismissed early too. Avoid getting wet. Avoid traffic jams. Avoid the flash floods. Avoid missing the bus. Bonus na naman ito. Nakita nyo na to. Okay, many people are answering with letter C. Ma'am Liza Torion Cruz on Facebook. Maraming salamat po for sharing the video. Okay, the correct answer would be letter C, to avoid flash floods. Lalong lalo na dyan sa Pilipinas, no? Konting ulan ay bumabaha. Okay, meron pang ang, uh, I forgot, was it 
Santa Rosa, Laguna yata, just recently, I've seen it on the news, no, na merong batang namatay, walang ulan sa Santa Rosa, Laguna, pero nagka-flash flood. Because of course, um, the rain was in the mountains. Okay, so catch basin sila, and so lahat ng ulan, lahat ng baha ay napunta sa kanila. And so merong namatay na isang bata, no, 10-year-old boy, who died because of it. Okay, so number 17, napakahirap nito. Pag umula, no, sabi ni Sir Jeffrey Arida sa Maynila, mostly sa university, waterproof kahit na may baha, may paso. Ang bond pa lang dito, minsan um, walang ulan, may baha, sabi ni Sir Pinoy Prenor. Yes, that is true. Okay, especially Manila sa mga congested natin na, na cities, even in Iloilo, bumabaha po sa mga market na part, no, sa super, palaging may baha. Okay, now number 18, we see nature in poetry, what is predicted by Blake in this line, a dog starved at his master's gate predicts the ruin of the state. If this describes countries, it predicts prosperity, productivity, disaster, famine. Good evening, Ma'am Josephine Bailon. Habol po. Okay, many people are answering letter C on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Dito sa Facebook, karamihan letter C din. Okay, number 18 says, we see nature in poetry. What is predicted by Blake in this line? A dog starved. Okay, ang isang aso na nagutom at his master's gate predicts the ruin of the state. So pag merong isang isang aso na nagutom sa gate ng isang sa kanyang master, it can predict the ruin of the state. Pagkasira ng uh, bansa, pagkasira ng state, no, ng estado. So if this is describing countries, it predicts prosperity, maginda, maginhawang buhay, productivity. Uh, disaster or letter D, famine. The correct answer would be letter D, famine po, taggutom. Okay, so famine means walang makita, walang makain. Okay, walang makita ang pagkain, walang makain. Because you say, um, he said a dog starved. Okay, starved, nagutom. So letter D po yung tamang sagot. Letter D, not letter C. So that's letter D, famine is the correct answer for number 18. Now we go to number 19, second to the last for tonight's Gen Ed. After the revolution, Makario Sakai went underground and established a republic based on the ideology of the Bonifacio Jacinto Katipunan. What do you call the republic published by Sakai? Magandang gabi po sa ating mga latecomers, no? Habol po kayo. Habol po tayo. Ma'am Arlene Shaw on YouTube. Good evening po. First timer yata si Ma'am. Okay, the first timers, please don't forget to react to our video. Those people who are watching on Facebook, like our Facebook page. So that you'll be notified of our next live stream. Next live stream po will be tomorrow, 7 p.m. That's Philippine time. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Silguru Pinoy. Those people who are on YouTube, please like the video. If you haven't liked the video yet, please like the video. Go to our YouTube, check all the live streams uh, that we had in our playlist for live streams. There's Gen Ed Prof at live stream na playlist. Meron po tayong Gen Ed playlist at meron po tayong Prof and the playlist doon. Okay, so tingnan nyo po lahat na nandiyan na videos sa ating YouTube channel. Okay, so maraming C. Ma'am Elsie Saludes, nakisabay o. Oh. Makisabay na rin sa C. Okay, so the correct answer for number 19 is 
letter C, it's the Tagalog Republic. Tagalog Republic po ang uh, republic na itinayo ni Macario Sakai. Okay, so letter C, Tagalog Republic is the correct answer. All right, we go to the last question. Last question for Gen Ed tonight. The teacher was surprised and asked, what is all the hubbub about? This means letter A, hush, letter B, commotion, letter C, serenity, letter D, stillness. Welcome po sa lahat ng mga uh, ngayon lang nanonood no, sa Facebook. Ngayon lamang nag-join sa atin. Nag-join nag sa atin. Welcome po on Facebook. Please like our Facebook page so you may be notified of our live streams. Next live stream will be to, uh, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Okay, please like this video, heart this video, react to this video. Wag lamang po angry. Okay, and please share this video on your Facebook accounts, on the groups that you have uh, joined on Facebook. Okay, with all of your friends, with all of your classmates. Okay, so again, number 20, the teacher was surprised and asked, what is all we have about? This means letter A, hush, letter B, commotion, letter C, serenity, letter D, stillness. Okay, a lot of people on uh, YouTube are answering letter B, 18 out of 20. My score na si Mang Pistin. Okay, here on Facebook, many people are also answering with letter B. Now, as you can see, hush means quiet, calmness. Okay, that's peaceful. Okay, so calm, no, yung hush. And then, yung serenity mo, that also would mean calmness, stillness. Okay, so pareho lang po yung meaning ng A, C, and D. And so you know that habab would mean commotion. Okay, commotion is the correct answer. Letter B po for number 20 okay so letter b for number 20 that's commotion okay so commotion po ang tamang sagot natin for number 20 that ends our gen ed tonight we go for a few minutes of break and we'll come back at 805 for our prof ed Okay, so marami sa inyo ay maganda yung score sa Gen Ed tonight. Balikan ko lamang to. Okay, so we'll uh, continue at 
All right, now those of you who are going to join our uh, online acquaintance party on September 12, later po today, I will be posting the guidelines for our contests. So sumali na po kayo. Remember, we have four contests. There is um, uh, spoken poetry, there's t-shirt design, uh, meron din tayong singing contest, and then there's the TikTok dance challenge. Okay, so sumali na po kayo. Uh, meron po tayong cash prize. Okay, so sali po kayo, magpalista kayo. If you are still not in the group chat for our online acquaintance party, then make sure that you check our post on that. And mag-comment po kayo doon no, para ma-add po kayo ni Ma'am Ella, who is our online secretary natin. Ma-add po kayo sa ating FB uh, chat group okay, para po uh, uh, makasali kayo doon. Aba, may nagtatanong na how much po yung cash prize? Magpalista na po kayo and uh, later today I will be posting the mechanics para alam ninyo kung anong gagawin kung ilang minutes, for example, for your spoken poetry at uh, iba pang guidelines. Okay, so magpalista kayo para may uh, cash prize. Po, pwede naman kung gusto nyo eh, load, no? Po, pwede din naman i-load na lang natin. All right, so again, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok sa atin. Balik na po tayo. Please do like, subscribe uh, to our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, follow our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check all the videos that we have that can help you pass the left. And of course, uh, make sure that you share this video so that we can help more people just like you pass the left. Okay, we go back to our professional education. Okay, we still have 20 items, all for Prof. Ed. And of course, after this, uh, the next live stream will be tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow po, 7 p.m. Philippine time. All right, question number one, Prof. Ed. A teacher is said to be a trustee of the cultural and educational heritage of the nation and is under obligation to transmit to learners such heritage. Which practice makes him fulfill such obligation? Letter A, use interactive teaching strategies. Letter B, study the life of Filipino people. Letter C, use the latest educational technology. Letter D, observe continuing professional education. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer? Yes, we can uh, make it live on YouTube. Live po tayo sa YouTube for our acquaintance party. Sir GJ Mortab. Okay, so again, I'm inviting all of you to please join our online acquaintance party, join our activities, our competitions. Okay, hindi lamang para sa cash prize, of course, but para din ma-share ang inyong talent. Okay, mapasaya yung inyong mga online kaguro. Okay, so kahit na magkakalayo-layo tayo, kahit hindi tayo nakikita-kita dahil nga sa quarantine, especially dyan sa Pilipinas, no, kung, kung bawal pa kayong lumabas, eh makapag-enjoy uh, naman tayo. Kalimutan natin yung problema ng dulot ng pandemic. Okay, so that's going to be on September 12. Okay, now this question, many people on YouTube are saying familiar yung question. Tama po kayo na, na uh, ask na ito dati sa inyo, no? A teacher is said to be a trustee of the cultural educational heritage of the nation and is under obligation to transmit to learners such heritage, which practice makes him fulfill the passing of heritage to our students. And the correct answer would be letter B, the study or, or study the life of Filipino people, especially those people who are successful. So as you can see, even on, in our social studies na books, no, sa sa Pinas, social science books, sa history book, no? sa mga Hekasina book, eh meron mga famous Filipino, no? yung mga Pinoy na nagbigay ng karangalan sa bansa. Okay, so number one po, letter B. Now, number two, as a community leader, which one may a teacher not do? 
Letter A, play an active part in activities of the community. Letter B, solicit donations from philanthropists in the community. Letter C, support efforts of the community to improve their status in life. Or letter D, make herself aloof to ensure decisions. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number two? Ano kaya ang tamang sagot for question number two? Many people are answering either B or D. Okay, now going back to your question, a community or as a community leader, which one may a teacher not do? Meron po tayong word na not dyan. Saan dito yung hindi ginagawa ng isang guro? Play an active part in activities of the community. Ay, nako, active na active si ma'am. Palaging MC si ma'am. Palaging in charge si ma'am, no? Let her be solicit donations from philanthropists in the community. Yes, ginagawa din ito ni ma'am. Pag may palaro, no? Pag may mga sports, uh, may mga events, may mga competition, ay uh, umiikot si ma'am sa community, nihingi ng pera, ng donation, nagpapasulisit. Support efforts of the community to improve their status in life. Okay? Uh, now, um, sumusuporta tayo sa efforts ng ating community dahil hindi lamang yung community yung nagiging successful kahit na din yung status ng ating life. A letter D, make herself aloof to ensure decisions. And the correct answer would be letter D. Tama po yan, letter D. Aloof kasi that would mean wala kang pake, wala kang ime. Hindi ka nagsasalita. So letter D is the correct, uh, letter D. Yes, that's, that's right. No, letter D po, ang tamang sagot for question number two. Letter D is the correct answer. Aloof is your hint. Okay, now number three. In a knowledge-based society, teachers must be capable of effective communication. What does effective communication involve? Okay, you have your choices there. Number one, teaming, collaboration, and interactive communication. Number two, interpersonal skills and personal responsibility. Number three, social and civic responsibility. Number four, adaptability and self-questioning. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for question number three? Thank you, Ma'am Rosina Pangilinan, for sharing our video. Okay, again, please don't forget to react to this video, like this video, love this video, just don't hate this video. Okay, you may say wow to this video. Follow our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, um, and of course, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch all the videos that we have there for our Gen Ed playlist, Profit playlist, live streams playlist, okay, so that you may be helped in your um, next goal, which is to become a licensed professional teacher. Okay, now many of you are answering letter A and C. Okay, A and C. All right, on Facebook, many people are answering letter C, and that would be the correct answer. Letter C po, hindi lamang one, two, three, hindi lamang collaboration, interactive communication, interpersonal skills, personal responsibility, social, civic responsibility, kahit adaptability po, kailangan, kailangan, and self-questioning. Okay? So, self-reflection po yung self-questioning. Adaptability, napaka-importante, especially ngayon, no? May new normal na. So, kahit na, for example, sa school, we need to go online, we need to do it virtually. So, kami, no? Virtual na din yung aming klase. Uh, so, adaptability, you should be flexible. And of course, you should have the power of reflecting, no? self-reflection, itong self-questioning. Self-questioning is self-reflection. Okay, napaka-importante nito at napaka-hirap nitong gawin, no? So, when you go home before you go to sleep, you try to examine, review whatever it is that happened the entire day. Uh, maaring kung sa teaching lamang what happened in your class, no? Was it successful? Anong mag mga naging effective? Was there something that you want to change that you think might be more effective? Okay, so that would be the correct answer. Letter C po. 
All right, now we go to number four. The professional teacher is not the sage on stage, but the guide from the side. This implies that teachers provide an almighty omniscient image. Letter B, serve as dispenser of knowledge. Letter C, cling to their power to impose rules. Or letter D, act as facilitator for learning or of learning. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Rusel, Salvedia, Baginon, for tagging your friends. Okay, so be like Ma'am Rusel. Itag nyo na po lahat ng mga kakilala nyo magtitake ng let. Okay, so that you can also help them pass the let. This is libre. This is just for free. And of course, you will be able to help a lot of people. Now, uh, also be very wary if you are joining some groups because sometimes um, some of the groups, I'm not saying all of them, but sometimes some of the groups are not taking their time in rationalizing the question and sometimes they may give you the wrong answer. Okay, so maging mapanuri din po kayo, tingnan din po ninyo yung mga sagot. Sir George Morla, habol po, Sir George. Ma'am Rabia Mitimbang, hello, she said, from Dato Odin, Maguindanao. Okay, so again for question number four, the professional teacher is not the sage on stage, but the guide from the side. This implies the teacher's... Okay, so sage on stage, sage po, that means expert. So sage on stage, siya lang yung palaging nagsasalita, no? siya lang yung palaging bida. Guide from the side naman, wala na masyadong ginagawa yung teacher, yung students yung maraming ginagawa, nagka-guide lamang yung guro. And so the correct answer is letter D. Letter D po ang tamang sagot, act as facilitator of learning. Tama po yan. Okay, so for number four, letter D is the correct answer. Okay, number five, which activities may generate interpersonal relationships in the work environment? Business party, gossips, challenging the best, learning new skills. Thank you, Sir Nilmar. Okay, he has also tagged Sir Nilmar DG Kabakungan. He also tagged his friend, Mom, uh, T. Lin, Teacher Lin Francisco Bato, um, for tagging your, video, your, your friends. Ma'am Lizelle, Bolivar Liboon, for tagging your friends. Okay, Ma'am Roslyn, Betores, Hebulan, thank you po for sharing the resources with your friends. Papa. Huh. Okay, letter D, ang karamihan sagot dito sa ating uh, YouTube. Sabi ni Sir Barbosa Squad, next week sisilap, sisilip na si Kajo. Okay, Bermans na. Ang bilis ng panahon, di ba? Kakaumpisa lang ng, um, ng year, eh, Bermans na naman, no? Maririnig nyo na si Kajo. Kajo Marie, Eliana, ay, Eliana tuloy. Ka Jose Marie Chan. Okay, dito sa Facebook, karamihan din letter D. Ma'am Rosina Pangilinan, again, thank you po for sharing the video. All right, for number five, sabi kasi ng question number five mo, which activities may generate interpersonal relationships? Interpersonal relationships. Okay, so ang ibig sabihin nito, interpersonal relationships, nagiging maganda yung relasyon nyo uh, in the work environment. Is it letter A, Christmas party, letter B, gossips, letter C, Challenging the best, Larry Dean, learning new skills. And the correct answer is, Tama si Ma'am Christine at si Ma'am Mylene sa YouTube. It's Christmas party. Okay, remember pag may party, eh palaging nagiging magka-close yung iba't ibang tao na nandiyan sa inyong work environment. May mga pa-practice, lalo-lalo na sa Pinoy, no? napaka-big deal ng ating Christmas party, may practice, may presentation kayo, uh, so magpa-practice kayo para sa inyong contest, may dance contest, okay, may uh, exchange gifts, and so they can, or these can generate interpersonal relationships. Nagiging close yung mga tao sa work environment. Oh, sabi ni Ma'am Christine, sabi na eh, 
Okay? Not just learning new skills, but parties. Kasi ito yung mga time na relax kayo. Okay? So, ito yung mga time na relax kayo. Hindi kayo nag-iisip about sa inyong trabaho. And so, this can really be very thank, uh, very, very helpful in creating interpersonal relationships. Okay? So, letter A is the correct answer. Letter A po ang tamang sagot. Yan na ang hudyat ng Burmans. Sabi ni Sir Barbosa Squad. Okay? Tama po yan. Okay, now we go to number six, the establishment of kindergarten classes, elementary and high school, and the higher institutions of learning point to which characteristic of the Philippine educational system? Letter A, accessible. Letter B, relevant. Letter C, concrete. Letter D, integrated. Uh, tipong katatapos lang ng New Year, paglabas mo September na agad. Keep safe lahat. Okay? So, Pinoy Pinoy. Sabi ni Sir Pinoy. Maraming nga nagsasabi na i-skip na nga lang daw, no? I-end na daw yung 2020. Dahil napakaraming trahedya sa kung na nangyari sa 2020. The unthinkable, yung mga nangyari sa 2020, lahat nung, yung iba nga eh, parang nakikita lang natin sa sci-fi movies dati. Okay, so we started with, uh, of course, we started with the, the death of Kobe Bryant. Okay, January ba yung death ni Kobe Bryant? Eh, napakabilis. Ngayon, eh, mag-reaper na. Okay, so that was uh, on January 26, 2020. Parang kailan lang, di ba? January yun. Okay? At ngayon ay uh, magsi-September na. Okay, now going back to your question here, the establishment of kindergarten classes, elementary high school, higher institutions of learning, point to which characteristic of Philippine educational system? Many of you are answering letter D. And that is a correct choice. Okay, so integrated. Pag nalilinig nyo yung term na integrated, no? Uh, Tigbawat integrated school. So that means nandyan may kinder siya, may elementary, may high school. Okay, kung wala mang higher learning or higher institution. Okay, so sabi ni Sir Jeffrey Arida, lahat ng national high school dito, sa kanila daw, nagkaroon lang ng grade 11 at 12, naging integrated na. Okay, so may senior high school na. Integrated, that means nandyan na lahat, kompleto siya. Okay, number seven. The teacher should provide an environment conducive to learning in line with his or her function as a change agent, a responsible citizen, facilitator of learning, leader in the community. Okay, that's a very good question. Ma'am Mona Felisan. Ma'am Mona is asking, Ma'am, next month po ba? The same sked pa rin po. Saturday, Sunday, we will check. Okay, so Ma'am Kimberly Cordova said, by 2021, we will have a blessed year. Always pray po tayong lahat. Thank you po. Oh yes, tama yan si Ma'am Beth Noble. No? Sabi ni Ma'am Beth, uh, 2020, yung mga sakuna, it all started with Data Al Volcano, yes. Before pa siya na kay Kobe, no? So next month, going back to the question of Ma'am Mona Felisan, we will see if we can do Saturday, Sunday because if... Uh, Marami nang magbabalik sa, sa school, marami nang babalik sa work, then uh, we will find out. We might do uh, less number of days but lengthier discussion. Pwede naman. Or we can also do maybe five, five questions, Gen Ed, five questions, Prof Ed, and then we'll do it more often. Okay, so that means... Mas maraming araw, pero five questions, five questions lamang. So, maiksi lamang siya. We will see. Ma'am Josephine Bailon, thank you for sharing our video. Maraming salamat po. Okay, number seven, the teacher should provide an environment conducive to learning in line with his or her function. As A, correct answer, of course, letter C, facilitator of learning. So, facilitator of learning po, ang tamang sagot, that's letter C for number seven. 
Now we go to number eight. Who is most likely to advise you to modify your classroom environment in such a way that your pupils will be motivated to learn? Okay, is it letter A, the humanist? Letter B, the behaviorist? Letter C, the social reconstructivist? Or letter D, the constructivist? Okay, Sir Edgar is using his printed copy of uh, the answer sheet. Okay, good job po, Sir Edgar. At least, eh, nahahasa na si Sir Edgar, no, sa pag -shishay. All right, so again, going back to question number eight natin dito, who is most likely to advise you to modify your classroom environment in such a way that your pupils will be motivated to learn? Now, this is, of course, part of your isms. If you haven't watched our video yet on the isms of education, make sure that you check that on YouTube later. So we already have a video on the isms of education. Lahat po ng ism doon ay na-discuss na. Okay, now, the humanist here, when you say humanist, humanism, their goal is for self-actualization. Okay, so they want the child to be the best ver version of himself, okay? The best that he can be. The behaviorist, of course, and sabi ng behaviorist, you can make a child anything you'd want him to be. What you need to do, the only thing that you need to do is to shape his environment, okay? So sabi ng behaviorist mo kasi, the child has no choice of what he or she would become. It's all dependent on his environment. Okay, so the environment would play a very big factor in the growth of the child. Letter C naman, the social reconstructivist, sabi ng social reconstructivism ninyo, you should change the curriculum so that the students would become leaders in your society so that they can change the society into something that's better. Okay, changing the society into a better society, the social reconstructivism. So under the social reconstructivism mo nga, Yung mga NSTP nyo, under the Jan sa social reconstructivism. Letter D mo naman, the constructivist, sabi ng constructivism mo naman, do not make or do not give the students a definition of the word. Instead, give the students the activities so that he or she would come up with his own or her own definition of the word. Okay? So, siya dapat yung nagko-construct, nag-make ng meaning niya sa mind niya, no? Through the activities that you make him or her do. Okay, so that's constructivist, constructivism. And so the correct answer here, modify your classroom environment. Your term here, your tip, okay, your hint here would be the term environment. Okay, sino nga ba itong the environment? Of course, that's letter B, the behaviorist. Okay, behaviorist po ang ating tamang sagot. Um, uh, Kimberly Cordova, nasa grow po yung answer sheet. Nandun na po sa Grow. If you are in Grow, then there is uh, an answer sheet po doon na po pwede nyo i-download at i-print. Okay, now number nine, what are the qualities of empowered teachers? Learn and grow on the job. Work individually to solve problems. Believe that the learner is at the center of the school of the school culture. Let, uh, number four, believe that improving instruction is everyone's responsibility. Ano nga ba yung mga qualities ng isang empowered na teacher? Pag ikaw ay isang empowered na guro, saan dapat dyan yung mga characteristics mo o yung mga qualities mo? Okay. All right, many of you are answering with letter C on Facebook. Okay, dito sa YouTube, ganun din. Karamihan ay letter C ang sagot. Okay, and letter C, of course, is the correct answer. Okay, so if you are an empowered teacher, you should learn and grow on your job. You should not be working individually. Lalong lalo na ngayon, no? your PLCs are very common in uh, the teaching institutions of PLC natin, professional learning community. And so your administrators would always um, uh, tell you, would always encourage you to work with your co-teachers. So dapat ay marunong kang mag-work with a team. 
believe that the learner is at the center of the school of the school culture believe that improving instruction is everyone's responsibility okay improving instruction is everyone's responsibility pero dapat ay nagtutulong-tulungan tayo no believe that the learner of course is at the center of the school marami po kasi na uh, yung ibang tao napaka uh, napakatalino but they cannot work with other people okay so uh, that makes it detrimental for them in their their work no in their career so dapat eh holistic ka marunong ka flexible ka marunong ka din of, of course makisama sa ibang tao hindi na ikaw lang yung matalino palaging ikaw na lang yung tama hindi ka marunong makinig at feeling mo talaga eh mas mataas ka kaysa sa ibang tao okay so the correct answer is letter C 1 3 and 4 po ang tamang sagot so tandaan po natin yan be able to communicate with others and be able to work with others okay that is one of um the best characteristics that we can have as professional teachers okay now we go to number 10 which activity is characterized by a relationship of mutual trust and respect with individuals agreeing to observe each other's teaching and resolving problems together okay this is still in connection with question number nine right so ano nga ba itong term na ginagamit dito kung kayo ay nag-agree that you are going to observe each other's teaching and of course you are going to be resolving problems together. So usually your principal would ask you to work with someone who's also teaching the same, uh, who's teaching the same subject, no? So yung PLC nyo, so kayo yung magpaplano. Minsan, uh, ako, like for example, ako kahapon, gumawa ako ng aming lesson plan, um, next week's lesson plan, so I made the lesson plan for next week, and then I share it with the people who are teaching the same subject. And then um, some of them, some of them would tell me, uh, thank you, and I'll be making the next two weeks lesson plans. Okay, so it's very important for you to learn how to communicate. And of course, learn how to help each other because no one is an island. Everyone is a social being. We are all social animals and we should know how to communicate with people and how to cooperate with people, how to work with other people. Pero of course, dapat ibusog din kayo, no? So, kain po tayo. Nguya-nguya din minsan. Together, sabi ni Sir Pinoy Prenur, no? Sabi ngayon, our hashtag in school is together is better. All right, so the correct answer here, of course, would be, okay, correct answer would be letter D, peer evaluation. When you talk about peer, of course, what you're talking about here, ang ibig sabihin kasi ng term na peer is someone of the same age or someone of the same status, okay? So para, pareho kayo ng estado. Okay, so letter D po ang tamang sagot for question number 10, that's peer evaluation. Mentoring kasi, maaaring ito yung ginagawa sa iyo ng iyong principal or yung iyong coordinator, no? Brainstorming naman, you are trying to generate a lot of ideas. Okay, that's brainstorming. Group dynamics, group dynamics would be an activity uh, ginagawa ito usually sa team building. Okay, so group dynamics, meron kayong mga activities. Um, at ito ay kalim kalimitan natin nakikita sa team building. No? Um, swerte kayo pag meron kayong team building. Uh, prior to the beginning of the school year. Okay, so the correct answer will be letter D, peer evaluation. Kayong dalawa ay pupunta sa inyong mga classrooms at i-evaluate nyo yung uh, parehong klase ninyo. No? Re-resolve nyo kung anong problema meron kayo. Alright, so number 11, according to the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, upon which are appointments, promotions, and transfers made? Letter A, civil status. Letter B, health. Letter C, merit and needs. Letter D, exigency of the service. Okay, Sir Edgar is eating nilagang mane hapon nag debut Sarap niyan, food for the brain. Pampatalino. 
All right, again, please don't forget to like or heart or say wow to this video. Okay, follow our Facebook page, Gurung Pinoy. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gurung Pinoy. Okay, and like the video, everyone who are on YouTube who haven't liked this video yet, make sure that you like this video. And of course, most importantly, make sure that you share this on your Facebook page, on your groups, uh, in your groups, no? Sa lahat ng grupo na um, ginoy na nyo. And uh, of course, to all of your friends so that they may also be helped past the let. Maraming salamat, our Facebook viewers for reacting to our video. Okay, number 11. According to the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, upon which are appointments, promotions, and transfers made. Kailan ka mapopromote? Kailan ka magkaka-appointment? Kailan ka matatransfer? Is it only because of civil status? It's letter B. Health, letter C. Merit and needs, letter D. Exigency of the service. And the correct answer here would be, Ang letter C and D mo, pareho po siyang nasa Code of Ethics natin. But of course, more importantly, the correct answer would be letter C, merit and needs. Kasi po, kasama dyan yung promotion. Okay? So, yung promotion dapat is based on merit. Dapat eh, hindi dahil sip-sip ka or dapat eh, hindi dahil um, pinsan mo yung principal. Okay? So, merit and needs. So, kung kailangan ka kailangan ng ganitong posisyon, ay magkakaroon ng ganyang posisyon. Kung kailangan kang ilipat sa ganitong school, ay eh, ililipat ka sa ganyang school. So, merit and needs would be the correct answer. Letter C po ang tamang sagot. Alright, number 12. A teacher shall behave with honor and dignity at all times. What activities should she or he refrain from indulging? Gambling, smoking, illicit relations, lotto betting. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 12? Again, please don't forget to share our video. Share it on your Facebook accounts, the groups that you have uh, joined with regards to the let. Tag your friends, start a watch party, anything that you can do to share our video so that we can help more people pass the lead. Now, again, as uh, an advice to many of you, I know na maraming groups no, sa Facebook na po pwede niyong salihan, po pwede niyong kuhanan ng inyong mga materials for the lead. Advice ko lamang po ay maging mapanuri kayo. Minsan, eh, pareho yung question, iba yung answer. So, tingnan niyo pong mabuti. Okay? All right, now for number 12 here. Lahat naman ito ay kung po pwedeng iwasan, ay dapat iniiwasan ng isang guro. Okay, so gambling, smoking, illicit relations, lotto betting. Okay, so lahat sila, um, kung kailangan or kung po pwedeng iwasan bilang guro at dahil pati nga ng ating code of ethics, ay kailangang iwasan natin at dahil um, gusto nating maging magandang ehemplo sa ating mga student. So gambling, smoking, illicit relations, lotto betting. Itong lotto betting, very common. No? Pagkagaling ni ma'am sa school, ay dadaan si ma'am sa lotto station bago umuwi. Okay? Karamihan kasi sa ating mga Pinoy ay mahilig talaga sa mga parafol. Gambling, si ma'am ay palagi nagsiswimming. Okay? So, pagka uh, weekend, eh, nagsiswimming si ma'am. Alam niyo naman, minsan, eh, eto ay method ni ma'am para mag-release ng kanyang stress. Okay? So, swimming, or minsan ay tong its okay? Or minsan naman, eh, nasa sabungan, no? Si sir, no? Okay lang yan. Smoking naman, uh, minsan din ay way ito para i-release ng ating mga um, teachers ang kanilang stress, no? So, maraming guru din yung nag nagsusmoke. Uh, minsan, ngayon nga, ngayon nga eh, medyo modern na si sir at si ma'am, meron ng mga nag-vape. Okay? Mga nag-vape na. Uh, electric cigarettes na, no? Now, letter C naman, uh, illicit relations, ito ay yung merong mga kabit-kabit si sir, merong mga uh, si ma'am na pumatol sa isang taong meron ng asawa. Okay? So, those are illicit relations. 
And so, the correct answer, of course, yung pinakagrabe yung degree nito, dito, or dito, at po pwede ka talagang kasuhan, marivoke ang inyong license, would be letter C. Okay? So, letter C po would be the correct answer. Letter C, illicit relations, po pwede ka kasing kasuhan ng asawa, ng iyong, mang, iyong, iyong karelasyon, at po pwedeng marivoke yung iyong lisensya. Okay? So, letter C, illicit relations, it would be the correct answer. It would be the correct answer. Okay, so that's the correct answer for number 12. Number 13, professionalism is not an end state for an occupation. Rather, it is a continual process of reaching the forms of letter A, obligation, letter B, prestige, letter C, responsibility, letter D, accountability. Thank you, Mom Priscilla Llamas, for sharing our video. That is immorality, sabi ni Sir Mark Toledo. Yes, my late, my delay sa Facebook. Hindi siya uh, synchronized sa YouTube, no? May ilang seconds silang delay. All right, we're already at number 13. Professionalism is not an end state for an occupation. Rather, it is a continual process of reaching the forms of obligation, prestige, uh, responsibility, or accountability. And the correct answer is, many of you are answering with answering letter C, my letter D. Okay, the correct answer po would be letter D, accountability. Okay, accountability, po, of course, would be a degree higher than your responsibility. When you say responsibility, kasi you are doing those things that are asked of you to do. You are doing your task. You're responsible sa yung task. Pero pag sinabi mong accountability naman, you are answerable for your actions. Okay, you take, you take responsibility. You take, uh, you, you answer to all of your actions. Kung ano mang ginawa mo, even if uh, tama siya or mali siya, ay hinaharap mo kung ano yung magiging consequences. Okay? So, accountability po is the correct answer. Kaya palagi nyo itong naririnig sa ating mga public officials, no? Accountability, not just responsibility kasi given na yan. Dapat eh, pag meron kang task, gagawin mo talaga. But being accountable means being answerable to all the consequences of your actions. Okay? So, pag may... Um, uh, dapat pag merong namali, pag merong pumalpak, ikaw yung mag-take ng accountability. Ngayon nga, nakikita natin ito sa ating gobyerno, no? Tago ng tago kung sino yung dapat eh accountable. Alright? So, pag uh, merong dinidinig sa Senado, minsan ay hindi pumupunta, no? Ibang tao yung pinapapunta, pinapapunta nila, yung ibang representative pinapapunta nila. Wala silang, they're not taking accountability. Okay? So, dapat accountable ka sa lahat ng mga mangyayaring mangyari dahil sa iyong actions. Okay, number 14. Which of the following is demonstrated when the teachers conduct themselves with respect, maintaining proper ethics and decorum inside and outside the classroom? Is it letter A, personal achievement and self-worth? Letter B, quality teaching and efficiency? Letter C, service and commitment. Letter D, professionalism. Yes, tama yan, sabi ni Sir Barbosa Squad. Naisip niya bigla ang field health. Okay, many people are answering the letter D, and that, of course, is the correct answer. This is professionalism, okay? So, maging 
dapat po bilang guro, lalo-lalo na tayo, no, as, as professional teachers, we should always conduct ourselves with respect, maintain proper ethics, and decorum inside and outside the classroom. So, dapat e professional ka, may professionalism ka. Okay? So, letter D po, ang tamang sagot. So, wag naman po kayo mag-TikTok. Po, pwede mag-TikTok pa minsan-minsan. Huwag naman yung grabe at huwag naman yung sexy TikTok. Okay? Be professional teachers naman. Huwag okay, professional naman tayo. Po, pwede tayong mag-TikTok, pero yung mga minsan, paminsan-minsan lang, at huwag naman yung nakapa-cleavage si ma'am, no? Uh, itago naman ni ma'am yung dapat yung itago. Alright? So, letter D, that's professionalism. Okay, number 15. The Code of Ethics stipulates that the accountability of teachers include his or her participation in teaching of religion, political activities, continuing professional education, number or letter D, community linkages. Thank you, Sir Choi Didyol or Mom Choi Didyol for sharing our video on Facebook. Okay, so po pwede naman kayo mag-TikTok. Huwag lang yung uh, lumalabas na yung hindi po pwedeng ilabas, ha? Okay, so yung mga pa cute, -cute lang sa TikTok. At huwag namang lagi-lagi na sobra pa kayo mag-TikTok kaysa sa mga estudyante natin. Okay? So, pag nag-TikTok yung isudyante mo, nag-post yung isudyante mo ng limang TikTok sa isang araw, dapat ay less yung number of TikToks ni ma'am. Okay? So, number 15, the code of ethics stipulates that the accountability of teachers include his or her participation in, okay, so we are accountable in our participation of teaching of religion. Hindi naman po tayo nagtuturo ng religion, no? Not all of us. Uh, maliban na lamang kung CLE teacher ka. Political activities, we should be nonpartisan. Ang political activity lamang na tinutulong, malaking tulong ng mga teacher would be in the election, no? So nagiging... Uh, assistance tayo during the, the electoral process. Continuing professional education, community linkages. These are both correct, but of course, the correct answer here, the best choice would be letter C. Continuing professional education. So, dapat eh, palagi ka pa rin nag-grow. Okay? Don't, st don't stop growing. Ngayon, eh, napakaraming online na mga trainings, no? Na po pwede ka makakuha ng mga online certificates. So, uh, i-grab niyo po yung mga chance ngayon habang pandemic pa, habang marami pa tayong time, habang hindi pa tayo required na lumabas ng bahay, eh mag-training po tayo online, okay? And then we can get our uh, certificates. So letter C is the correct answer. Letter C po. Okay, now we go to number 16. A student often bullies his classmate and misbehaves, but he passes his tests and participates in class activities. What is the responsibility of the teacher in this case, letter A, refer the misbehavior to the values education or CERC teacher. Letter B, deduct points for behavior from the scholastic ratings. Letter C, write an anecdotal record to the guidance counselor. Letter D, report the student's behavior to the principal. Okay, so don't stop learning. Mom Grace, balikan niyo na lamang po later. Thank you, Mamigan Kabigas, for sharing our video with your friends. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome, Mam Ma Ramil, uh, no, Sir Ramil Hans, Kabatanya Kwambot. He said, thank you for the videos. You're welcome, Paul. Okay, now many of you are answering letter C. Okay, so sabi dito, a student often bullies his classmate, misbehaves, but he passes his tests 
and participates in class activities. What's your responsibility as a teacher in this case? Refer the misbehavior to the values education or CERC teacher. Deduct points for, be for behavior from the scholastic ratings. Write an anecdotal record to the guidance counselor. Letter D, report a student's behavior to the principal. Okay, of course, we don't say na principal agad-agad. Ang letter C mo, pupwedeng tumama siya. Kaya lang, dahil pupwedeng sa guidance counselor, no? unang-unang step ay pupwedeng guidance counselor mo muna siya isang guni. Kaya lang yung mali dito would be your anecdotal record. Okay? Remember when you're you're writing your anecdotal record for something that is out of the ordinary, yung hindi mo palaging nakikita. Pero dito kasi sabi, often. So that means it is not something new to the student. Pupwede ka mag-anecdotal record kapag ka yung estudyante mo ay napakabait tapos isang araw eh uh, galit siya sa buong mundo. Okay? So you can write an anecdotal record for that. Okay, now letter B mo naman, deduct points for behavior. Sabi po ng ating constitution, ng code of ethics natin, hindi tayo po pwede mag-deduct ng points for behavior. Dapat yung basis na lamang for scholastic ratings natin, ang grade ng ating student, ang basis lamang would be the academic work. Okay, so hindi po po pwede mag-deduct mag ng behavior, okay, ng points for behavior. And so the correct answer here, your best choice would be letter A. Refer the misbehavior to the values education or CERC teacher. This is your Christian Education Resource Center's, uh, Center teacher. Po pwede din kasi itong letter C, kaya lang hindi tayo po pwedeng gumawa ng anecdotal record sa ating question dahil ganyan na talaga siya. Okay, maaari kayong gumawa ng anecdotal record kapag kasiguro eh, isang araw hindi na siya nang bubuli. No? Okay, kasi ito ay common sa kanya. Ito na talaga yung uh, ugali niya. All right, so the correct answer here, the best choice that we have would be letter A. Letter A po, yung tamang sagot. All right, now we go to number 17. A person who had a painful experience at the dentist's office may become fearful at the mere sight of the dentist's office. Which theory can explain this? Is it letter A, attribution theory? Letter B, generalization? Letter C, classical conditioning? Letter D, operant conditioning? Okay, again, if you're watching us on Facebook, make sure that you react to this video. Please hit the thumbs up sign, that like sign, uh, the heart sign, or the wow. Please react to our video. And also, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. You may also like our Facebook page. That's Guru Pinoy. That's the, fa the, the page where you're watching us right now. Okay, so that you can be notified of all the live streams of all the new videos that we'll have. Again, please like this video, react to this video, um, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel if this is your first time to watch us. Meron isa nag angry. Huwag naman po angry. Okay, if this is your first time to watch us, make sure that you also subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. We have so many videos there that can help you pass the lab. Meron po tayong uh, playlist for Gen Ed. Meron po tayong playlist for Prof Ed. And of course, we also have the playlist for all the previous live streams that we have. There's already more than 20 live streams that we have there. Okay, so you have to go to face uh, to YouTube, I mean, and check all of the videos that we have. Okay, and of course, also, please share our video. You can share it by starting a watch party. You can share it on your Facebook account. You can also tag your friends if you want to. Okay, so that uh, we may be able to help many of your friends and many of you Pass the let. So come 2021, we are going to have our first batch of Gurong Pinoy Study Link International Virtual LPTs. Okay, so licensed professional teachers na kayo in the next year. Okay, next year po ay magiging LPTs na kayo. And of course, we all did it through your hard work, through your dedication. And so walang sawang pagsuporta ninyo, of course, sa ating YouTube channel, sa ating Facebook page. Tiwala lamang po sa inyong sarili, kayang-kaya niyo po yan, do not give up because you can all pass the lap and you can all reach your dreams of having those letters at the end of your name. Okay, so magiging, uh, ano ka na, uh, tingnan natin, si Loreto, ano apelido ni Sir Loreto? Loreto Agbayani Balikaw Jr. LPT. 
Okay, so magkakaroon ka na ng LPT, karagdagang three letters at the end of your, your name. Okay, so again, going back to number 17 here, a person who had a painful experience at the dentist's office may become fearful at the mere sight of the dentist's office. Which theory can explain this? Okay, saan kaya dito ang tamang sagot? Attribution theory, generalization, classical, classical conditioning, operant conditioning. Now, you know operant conditioning to be the contribution of B.F. Skinner. Okay, B.F. Skinner po itong operant conditioning. Buros Frederick Skinner. Okay, so sabi ni, ni B.F. Skinner, po pwede kang gumamit ng reward, punishment, reinforcement, feedback, computer-aided instruction. Okay, dapat po nandiyan na yan sa notes niyo. B.F. Skinner, operant conditioning, reward, punishment, feedback, reinforcement, Computer-aided instruction. Paulit-ulit na itong sinasabi ko, especially sa ating mga kaguro na palagi nandyan sa ating YouTube channel na nasa live stream. So again, operant conditioning by B.F. Skinner, you have these five major terms. If you see these terms in your question in the left, B.F. Skinner, operant conditioning na po ang inyong tamang sagot. So that's reward, punishment, feedback, reinforcement, and computer-aided instruction. Okay? So, kay Skinner po yung lahat ng yan. Now, classical conditioning naman, this of course by Ivan Pavlov. Okay? So, the terms that are common in classical conditioning would be phobia and trauma. Okay? So, pag may phobia, may trauma sa iyong question, that's already going to be classical conditioning. So, sabi nga dito sa iyong question, painful experience. Fearful, meaning may phobia na siya, may trauma na siya, and so classical conditioning is the correct answer here. Okay, so letter C po, classical conditioning is the correct answer for letter C. That's by Ivan Pavlov. So if you see phobia, trauma, that's classical conditioning. We cannot choose generalization because uh, even if the, the person here is showing generalization, we are asking kasi for the theory. Okay, generalization, generalization is just a concept under your classical conditioning theory. Kaya classical conditioning yung ating sagot. Generalization is when you cannot differentiate all the stimulus. If you see similar stimulus, pareho yung nagiging response mo. Okay, parehong nagiging response mo. So for example, if you were beaten by a dog, common question ko sa let, if you were beaten by a dog when you were a child, now you have developed a phobia. Whenever you see a dog, pag uh, sinabi mong generalization, you are scared of all types of dogs. Okay? May it be a Doberman, may it be um, a pit bull, may it be a boxer, may it be big dogs or leash dogs, yung may nakatali, yung dogs na nasa kulungan, yung dogs na cute, si Snoopy, si, uh, si Blue, sa Blue's Clues, so Chihuahua man siya, takot ka. Okay? That's generalization. Discrimination naman, alam mo kung kailan ka lang dapat natakot. Okay? Nadidiscriminate mo yung iyong stimuli. Alam nyo kung uh, kailan mo kailangan lang gawin or kailan, kailan mo kailangan lang ibigay itong response na to. Okay? So, dapat bilang tao din, if we are talking about love life, for example, napasok ko lang yung love life, when you say generalization, pag nakakita ka ng poging lalaki, lahat na yung response mo, eh pareho. Okay? Gusto mo na... Um, mapalapit sa poging lalaking yan, okay? That's generalization. Pag, pero pag sinabi mo namang discrimination, alam mo na kahit maraming poging lalaki, kailangan eh yung response na to, yung pagiging may kilig, pagiging sweet, pagiging caring, eh dapat ibibigay mo lamang sa tamang tao, which is your boyfriend or your husband, your wife or your girlfriend. That's discrimination. Alam mo nang, alam mong pumili ng iyong stimuli, Okay? So, that's generalization and discrimination under po sila ng classical conditioning. Attribution theory naman, meron kang palaging rason. Okay? You always attribute it to someone or to something. If something is uh, successful, then you attribute it to yourself. Sinasabi mo na, na, ah, naging successful ako dahil sa aking kakayahan, dahil sa aking ginawa. That's why I became successful. Okay? So, that's attribution theory. Kapag ka, um, Kapag ka naging palpak naman, ay ina-attribute mo sa ibang tao. So sinasabi mo na, ay hindi ako nanalo dahil uh, lutong makao, dahil dinaya ako. Okay? That's attribution theory. You are attributing it to someone, you are attributing it to something. Something that happened, meron palaging rason. 
Okay, that's attribution theory. But of course, for number 17, the correct answer would be classical conditioning. That's letter C. Okay, number 18, which educational issue can be clarified by understanding Maslow's hierarchy, the effect of different classroom structures, the effects of poverty on academic achievement, delinquency in the public school, sex education issues in school? Ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Ayan, i-claim nyo na yan. Okay, so sabi ni Ma'am Kimberly, Cordova Kimberly B, LPT. Okay, so claim it so that you would continue to work towards your goal. Okay, sinasabi ng self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, pag naniniwala kayo, pag naniniwala yung mga tao sa paligid nyo, then you will be able to do it. Okay, Ma'am Raiden Marie Cangas Avelino, thank you for sharing our video. Jaime Mary, Mary Jean Martirez, LPT. Okay, claim yun na po yung lahat. And of course, nothing is possible without working hard for it. So, kain kaya po yan. Basta kayo ay uh, nagtutulungan at kayo po ay, of course, uh, naghihirap. Kailangan ipaghirapan para mas masarap ang inyong magiging tagumpay. Okay. Again, if you are watching us on Facebook, if this is your first time to watch us on Facebook, make sure that you like this video, you love this, vi this, this video, say wow to this video, please react to our video if you're watching us on Facebook. Now, also, please do like our Facebook page, the one that's uh, on your screens right now, Guru Pinoy, that is our official Facebook page. So like it so that you can be notified of all the next live streams, all the next videos that we are going to have. And if you're watching us on YouTube, we're also live on YouTube right now. It's uh, simultaneous with our Facebook Live. Uh, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if this is your first time to watch us. We have so many videos on YouTube that can help you pass the lab. We have our Gen Ed playlist, Prof Ed playlist, live streams for Gen Ed and Prof Ed. We have so many live streams already, more than 20 already in our playlist for uh, Gen Ed and Prof Ed live stream. Okay, where we discuss all the questions in the lab. Okay, so again, we are studying Guru Pinoy. Uh, we had a review center in Iloilo, but now we are doing everything online because we are currently living here in the U.S. because uh, I'm teaching here in the U.S. My name is Ma'am Mexa Ison Manaay. I'm a science teacher in Manning High School, Manning, South Carolina, and I am your Guru Pinoy. Okay, so again, please do share our video. Uh, watch it with your friends, start a watch party, or uh, tag your friends, or share it with your, share it on your uh, Facebook account. Okay, so again, maraming salamat po. Karamihan sa ating mga nasa Facebook ay first timer niyong pumunta dito, first time niyong pumag-join sa amin. Maraming salamat for joining us tonight. And of course, don't forget that our next live stream will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Philippine time. Okay, so if you are in the Philippines, if you are in the U.S., if you are um, wherever you are, make sure that by 7 p.m. Philippine time tomorrow, you are tuned in for our next live stream. Okay, that's 20 points or 20 items Gen Ed and 20 items Prof Ed. Okay, now we go to question number 18 still. We go back to this. Which educational issue can be clarified by understanding Mesa's hierarchy? Now, you know uh, Mesa's hierarchy of needs, no? Sabi ni Maslow, in his hierarchy of needs, there are five major steps, major ladders, until the person would be able to reach the top, no? So the the, the highest level of um, sa hierarchy ni Maslow, okay, Mesa's hierarchy of needs, would be self-actualization, being the best version of yourself. But before you can reach that, you need to first conquer the rest of the steps that you have here in his pyramid, okay? So first one would be physiological needs. Included there are food, water, sleep, even sex is included in your physiological needs. So body needs more, your physiological needs. Safety, you need to have a nurturing, safe home, loving home. Then of course, you need to have love and belonging. This is in terms of your relationships, not just your environment, but also your relationships. Then you will be able to uh, form your self-esteem. Okay, you've acquired the skills that lead to honor and recognize yourself. Then, of course, 
you can become the best version of yourself, which is self-actualization. Self-actualization po yan. And so, which among this, which issue here can be clarified by understanding Mesa's hierarchy? And the correct answer that we have is letter B, the effects of poverty on academic achievement. That means a person cannot self-actualize. A person cannot become the best version of himself because he has not met his physiological needs. Because food is one of the physiological needs that we have. Okay, so that's the effects of poverty. Poverty meaning the family is poor, meaning they don't have uh, enough food. Okay, so paano ka, how can you expect someone who's hungry to be able to do well in school? Okay, of course, uh, some people who come from poverty, you know, who come from poor families, they use this as inspiration and they work hard so that they can improve their lives. Okay, we all know that education is the major key that can change our lives. So kung ngayon eh, naghihirap kayo, mag-aral lamang pumabuti, maging LPT, at once makapasok na sa pagtuturo, ay magiging mas mabuti na ang estado ng inyong buhay. Okay? But of course here, uh, it says poverty has a, a very big, um, a very big, uh, what's this, a very big challenge on the academic achievement of the child. Okay? So that's letter B for number 18. Now next, 19, second to the last na po tayo. All of the following describe the development of children ages 11 to 13, except show abstract thinking and judgment, exhibit uh, increased subjectivity in thinking, sex differences and physical maturity become more evident. They shift from passivity to adaptive ability. Thank you, Ma'am Rabia Mitimbang. First timer ni Ma'am Rabia. Shout out kay Ren Zong Zongalia. Matutulog na, sabi ni Ma'am Geraldine Francisco. Loreto Agbayani Balikal Jr., LPT, sabi ni Sir Jeffrey. Malvin Pimentel, LPT. Roland Dalumbar, LPT. Nag-roll call na si Sir Jeffrey. Okay. All right. Again, please like this video, love this video, say well to this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch all of our YouTube uh, videos that can help you pass the lead. Like our Facebook page, this page, Guru Pinoy. And of course, share this video to all of your friends, to all the groups that you have in your Facebook account. Or you may watch or start a watch party so we can help more people pass the lead. Okay, 19. We're already at question number 19. All of the following describe the development of children ages 11 to 13, except we are looking for the exception. Shout out, Mom Racy May Bagis. Okay, now we are looking again for the exception. What do you think is the exception? Show abstract thinking and judgment. We know that that is true according to Piaget's cognitive development theory. No, meron ka dong four stages. Tinan nyo po sa ating mga live streams, lahat ng dyan, ay, lahat na ng series ay na-discuss natin. Meron din tayong isms for education na video. So tinan nyo po lahat ng isms nandun, nandun po sa ating YouTube account. Now, uh, sabi ni Piaget, your, the development of cognition, development of the brain or intelligence has four stages. Okay, so what are these four stages? There's uh, sensory motor, so smart people cook fish. Sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational. So when you say that the child is at already at 11 to 13 years old, formal operational na po ito. Okay, so the child can already show abstract thinking and judgment, exhibit increased subjectivity in thinking, sex differences, and physical maturity become more evident. We know this to be true. They shift from passivity, passi passivity, to adaptive ability, we know this to be true. And the correct answer, of course, the exception would be letter B. Letter B po ang tamang sagot. Exhibit increased subjectivity in thinking. Kasi pag sinabi mong subjective ka, that means you are thinking only of your own opinion. Or you're only looking at your own judgment. Bias ka. And this is, pag sinabi mong subjectivity dito, this is synonymous, pareho po siya sa egocentrism, okay? And egocentrism is not part of formal operational. Parte po siya ng ating um, pre-operational stage, okay? So pre-operational pa po siya. 
young kids are very subjective. Okay? So, palagi silang selfish. Ako, 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 lagi. Okay? So, that is our exception. Number 19 is letter B. A shout out from Bunawan, Agusan del Sur, Ma'am Nancy Legaspi Morilla. Good evening, Paul. Okay, now we go to the last question. Last question for tonight. What does Ganya's events of learning propose for effective instruction? Letter A, be concerned with the social emotional climate in the classroom. Letter B, teach beginning with the concrete. Letter C, reward good behavior. Letter D, sequence instructions. Okay? Ano kaya yung tamang sagot dito? Again, the next live stream that we will have, those of you who are watching us tonight, the next live stream poll will be tomorrow, 7 p.m. Uh, Philippine time. So make sure that you have your charged phone, you have your laptops ready by 7 p.m. And that you have your load, uh, load of course, no? may data dapat para makapanood kayo ng inyong live stream. Okay? May signal kayo dapat. Thank you, Ma'am Teacher Lynn Francisco. Ma'am Ma Lois from Negros Occidental. Good evening po. Shout out sa lahat ng mga taga Albuera Leyte. That's coming from Ma'am Tita Bantasan on, face, on YouTube. Rabia Midtimbang LPT, Jeffrey Arida LPT. That's a shout out coming from Sir Pinoy Prenur. Ma'am Jeline May Catalunya said, shout out kay Ma'am Mex, super bait. Thank you sa mga review. Naglalaan kayo ng oras para sa amin. May God bless and guide you always. You're welcome po. Okay, basta you should be doing your own part. Okay, and that is to study hard. Okay, so just work hard and you can all reach your goal of becoming a licensed professional teacher. Ma'am Christine Joy T. Acabo, LPT, sabi ni Sir Pinoy Prenur. Shout out for Ilo Ilo, my city, our city, the city of love, sabi ni Sir Mark Toledo. Okay, now going back to number 20, what does Ganya's events of learning propose for effective instruction? Now, this is the nine events of instruction according to Robert Gagne. Okay, so now, um, na, na post na din ito sa inyong grow, no? Na, nasa grow na din ito. So, sabi ni Gagne, you should sequence instruction. So, dapat eh, may flow ang iyong instruction. So, you start by gaining attention. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng motivation. Okay, we always start with motivation. Then, we inform learners of the objectives. Ginagawa natin ito, okay? Today's objective is this. You stimulate recall or of prior learning. Okay, so pupwedeng mag-recall ka, pupwede din namang mag-review ka, present the stimulus. Okay, so this would be your um this would be your discussion na, no? This would be your stimulus. Provide learning guidance so meron silang uh, guided work, for example, then you'll have illicit performance sila na yung gagawa. So may independent work na sinasabi. Provide feedback. You check their work and you tell them which one is right, which one is wrong. You assess performance that is by giving a test. Then, of course, they enhance. They need to enhance retention and transfer. This is, of course, done through application. So whatever is learned in the classroom, dapat po ay na-apply na outside of the classroom. Okay? Hindi po pwedeng dyan lamang sila nag-learn sa classroom. Pag uwi nila ng bahay, ay hindi na nila alam kung paano gawin. Okay? So these are the nine events of instruction according to Ganye. Again, this is already found in your grow, if you are on grow. And so, we say, for number 20, what does Ganya's events of learning propose for effective instruction? Be concerned with the social-emotional climate in the classroom. Teach, with, uh, teach beginning with the concrete. Reward good behavior. Sequence instructions. Remember, reward and punishment, that would be under B.F. Skinner. Okay, so kay B.F. Skinner po yan. Teach beginning with the concrete. Ito naman po ay kay Jerome Bruner. Remember, Jerome Brunner said you, you need to teach using concrete materials first. No? Okay, Jerome Brunner yung enacted and then iconic and symbolic na materials yung ginagamit sa teaching. Okay, lumabas po yan sa let, lumalabas yan sa let. Be concerned with the social-emotional climate in the classroom. Of course, we know that the correct answer would be letter D, sequence instructions. Okay, so letter D po is to sequence your instruction. Dapat eh, 
meron kang ginagawang sequence, okay? Mer meron kang ginagamit na sequence sa inyong instruction para na alam na ng iyong estudyante kung ano nang next, anong magiging um, next na activity, anong next na gagawin, okay? So, meron nang um, may train of thought na yung iyong bata, okay? So, as you can see, I have posted, we have posted a video of my virtual class on Facebook. Okay, uh, later tonight I will be posting another virtual class and doon sa virtual class na yon, uh, kompleto na siya. I started with the review, the warm-up of the students, then uh, you always see me, I always uh, read the objectives first, then I had the lecture, and then they go to their independent work, and then of course we have the closure. Okay, so I'm going to be posting that later. So abagan niyo po, pwede niyo iyong... Uh, po, pwede niyo siyang i-share sa lahat ng mga teachers, lahat ng mga guro na magkakaroon ng online classes very soon there in the Philippines. Okay? Now, I can see a lot of your scores. Magaganda yung mga scores natin tonight. And again, next, uh, our next live stream would be tomorrow night, 7 p.m. That's Philippine time. Okay? Nandito din yung mga taga-Facebook natin. Maraming salamat for watching. D stands for hindi mo alam. Ramil Kabatanya Kwambot, LPT. Always watching from Thailand as an ESL. Need to pass the let, sir or ma. Yes, sir Yungkyo. Kapit lamang po, sir Yungkyo. Balik po kayo ng balik dito. Okay, so Saturday, Sunday po, 7 p.m. ang ating live stream. All right. Okay, so again, sa muli, uh, balik po tayo tomorrow, 7 p.m. for our live stream. We all close this, our discussion tonight. It has been very productive. I thank all of you for being uh, interactive, for answering with me, and of course, for sharing your thoughts with me. We end tonight with a closing prayer. Of course, this is coming from Pastor Efren. Maraming salamat po, Sir, Sir Efren, for preparing our opening prayer and, of course, our closing prayer tonight. Okay, so we all have a closing prayer. Ang araw po na ito, hiniling ko po na samahan niyo po ako sa isang panalangin. Tayo po ay manalangin. Muli po kaming nagpapasalamat aming Ama sa mga bagong natutunan namin ngayong oras pong ito. Tinatanaw po namin na malaking kontribusyon ang ibinibigay ng aming mentor na panahon at karunungan. Patuloy mo sanang ingatan, pagkalooban ng mabuting kalusugan, at mas matagumpay na pamumuhay ang buhay ni Mang Meg. Sampu po ng kanyang mga mahal sa buhay. Ganon din po nawa sa aning lahat, Panginoon, hinahangad po namin na maging ligtas ang bawat isa na nandito. Opo, sa paraan namin ay hindi sapat upang maabot namin ang aming mga pangarap sa buhay. Kaya, aming Diyos, niling po namin na alalayan at ituro mo po sa amin ang mga tamang kaparaanan at mga desisyon. Iyakapin at pagpalain mo punawa ang bawat isa sa amin, O Diyos. Ito po ang aming sama-samang dalangin sa mga pangyarihang pangalan ni Jesus na aming Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Siya nawa. Okay, so again, maraming salamat po for, kay Pastor Efren Esteban for preparing our opening and closing prayers tonight. Again, um, he will be, he is going to be leading our prayers every Saturday. And of course, we'll have Mami Yunis Carbajal leading our prayers on Sundays. Okay, so Mami Yunis will be preparing our prayers for tomorrow night's uh, live stream. Okay, so I'd like to thank both uh, Pastor Efren, of course, Mami Yunis for sharing their um, their spirituality, no, for uh, also blessing us and blessing our live stream. Okay, so again, that ends tonight's live stream and that ends tonight's discussion. We'll see each other again tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Do not be late. Do not be gone because we are all working hard for you to have that LPT at the end of your names. All right, so samuli ito pong inyong gurong Pinoy. Good night. Ako po ay nagsasabing sabay-sabay po tayong lahat. Maliit man na butil na mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat po. Good night. Stay safe, people, and sleep well.